performance. That's what today's Tech Garage is all about. We'll take a look at this car, and we'll show you how you can bolt on some power performance on your own car right out in the garage. I'll see you in the shop. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. Today it's all about power and performance. We're talking about terms like horsepower and torque, which this car has plenty of. This car started out as a 351 Ford Windsor small block, and now with it bored and stroked, it's pushing about 407 cubic inches, and it's using single stage nitrous. This car runs in the Ultra Street class. It runs high fours. I know what you're thinking, high fours? Well, it's an eighth mile car. It's even doing it on radial tires. This season, we have with us Brian Gregory. Now, Brian Gregory, you're an avid car guy, and I know you like to get up under the hood. What can you tell us about bolting on some power to our daily driver? I do love working under the hood, John. And when you first look at this, bolt-on power, many of you are saying, huh, performance exhaust. I've done that. Maybe you're seeing the cold air intake saying, you know what, I've considered doing that or I've done that. Some of you have even reprogrammed your daily driver to get more power. We're definitely bolting on some power today. The real magic is in how John is going to explain that for us. Truly dissecting torque and horsepower, things like volumetric efficiencies and stoichiometric pressures, and what that really means in your power equation. So that's what I'm fired up to do is bolt on power, but really for John to teach us all about torque and horsepower. Now it's all about getting the air and fuel mixture into the cylinder and getting it out. And one of the first terms I want to talk about is volumetric efficiency. Now volumetric efficiency is pretty easy to explain. If you come over here with me and you see this piston. Now this piston, when it's on its way down, what's happening is the intake valve's opening and it's allowing that charge, that air fuel mixture to come into the cylinder. Now you see this area right here? Now depending on how much it fills that area is a percentage of volumetric efficiency. If it filled it up completely, that would be 100%. But see, that's not very likely because we have limitations of valves, intakes, and other things that are gonna stop it from filling up completely that the manufacturer has in there. Now our cold air intake is gonna address that issue. It's gonna allow our air to flow, come in there, fill that cylinder more, raising our volumetric efficiency, and also is gonna allow that cold, dense air to come in there to where we can mix the fuel and get a bigger charge. Now really, the only way to get over 100% volumetric efficiency is the supercharger turbocharger. Stay tuned to that, we'll do that in a later episode. Now also, that programmer, that programmer is gonna affect timing. Well, what's timing? Is that piston's on its way up. Right now, it's gonna fire. That's during the power stroke. It comes all the way up, the spark plug fires. Now, if it advances a little bit, like right now, before it gets up to the top, that's called advanced timing. If we start going the other way, that's retarded timing. Now that program, once again, is gonna twink some of the manufacturer settings and let us get a little more timing, a little more spark advanced here, so we can get that explosion happening a little earlier, a little better burn, and a little more power. Once that happens, it goes down, it has to go out. We'll talk about an exhaust system later. Now, a couple other terms I wanna talk about is horsepower and torque. Now, horsepower is the definition of measurement of work, and so is torque, so they're a little confusing, but I think I can illustrate it for you. Horsepower's definition is actually 33,000 foot-pounds per minute for one horsepower. So if I was to pull this up and down, now the rate I pull it up and down, that would exemplify horsepower. Now, torque, on the other hand, that's twisting force. It's work, but it's twisting force. Uh, think about horsepower in a circle, the wheel. When I start pulling on this torque wrench, I actually start to increase torque. Now, it doesn't matter the time. You can throw the time out the window because that's not a factor. 27 foot-pounds of torque is gonna loosen the bolt if it calls for 27 foot-pounds. Now, if I take this up here, the cylinder head, the ability for me to move it up and down, that's a really good illustration of torque. The rate I do it, that's a good illustration of horsepower. And that's actually what our cold air and exhaust is gonna do, increase both of those. Now, I'll take my nut here, crush it. I'll pick through some of this roughage. Why don't you go get a snack and we'll be back with more Tech Garage in a minute.
This edition of Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by KNM, Superior Airflow, Superior Performance. IA Coatings, over 50 years of experience in the performance coating industry. Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Welcome back to Tech Garage. Now it's time to get you back to the garage. Brian, looks like you're about ready to get to work. Absolutely, this is pretty basic, but let's face it, folks, there's really two driving factors that decide how much bolt-on power you'll put on a daily driver. You may or may not keep this vehicle for a long time. Those two factors are typically budget and time. Now, we are focusing on the basics today, replacing the factory air box and air intake system on our 09 Ram. Pretty standard stuff. We're going to replace it with a K&N cold air intake that many of you have actually done this project before. Not hard to do. But before we do that, John's got a fancy scan tool over there, and I'd like to do a little benchmarking. We're going to take a reading on the mass airflow sensor before the new air intake, and then again after, and we're going to show you the difference. So I'm going to button this back up, and Chase, go ahead and fire it up. Now there's two things we want to look at. You may not have a fancy scan tool like this one, but you know most scan tools will have these data. Now the first one we're looking at is right in the middle of the screen. It's the mass airflow sensor. What the mass airflow sensor, it's reading in grams per second and it's looking at the air that's coming in. Now you heard of cold air intake and you're probably thinking cold air. Well we're also talking about getting the air in with no restriction and that's also cooling it down because you don't have any kind of binding up of the air and causing heat. Now our mass airflow is reading about 13.7 grams per second. Go ahead and nail it. And you can see it got all the way up to about 27 grams per second. Now there's two things we want to look at. You can go ahead and shut it off. I also want to go over here and look at the temperature. So we can come over here to the sensor information. And you see there on the left hand screen you have the ambient temperature and the intake 78. Now this car is cold, it's really not indicative of what you'd be driving down the highway and it'd be a lot hotter as far as the intake air temperature is. But we want to see a difference there also. But the main thing is, is to get that air in, get that dense air in, and get it out. So we need to go over and get started on this one. We just about have this factory air intake system completely removed. Now if you have a design like this, you want to take care of your intake air temperature sensor connector. You're going to need that later. Stow it out of the way. The upper plenum comes off. The air box and all everything is loose. Work it up out and we're just about ready to make this engine breathe. Now while Brian's doing that, I want to talk about air fuel ratios. That perfect number. 14.7 to 1. 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. That's called a stoichiometric number. You know it takes 9,000 gallons of air to mix with one gallon of fuel to get that number. You probably heard the terms rich and lean conditions. Well, if I'm getting too much fuel and not enough air, that's going to be a rich condition. Now what would cause that? Just think about a lack of air. If a dirty air filter is going in there and I'm getting too much fuel, that's rich. Now on the other hand, you heard of a lean condition. Now a lean condition is too much air and not enough fuel. Well, our clogged fuel filter can cause that. The fuel's not going in, but the air's still going in. Shops and technicians use this, and if you have a scan tool, this is an awesome way to tell what's going on with your car. It's called short-term, long-term fuel trim. What the computer does, it actually varies the fuel. And you can see my chart right here. If you're looking at short-term and it's a positive number, that means the computer's adding fuel. Well, why is he adding fuel? That's because it's a lean condition. Something's going on. Too much fuel, not enough air. The other hand, it goes over here in the negative. Now, anything negative, the computer's taking away fuel. And when he's taking away fuel, that's because it's a rich condition. So by just knowing these numbers, you can determine if your cars are rich or lean, and you can figure out any of the problems. Now, let's see what's going on with Brian and how far he got along. With the collar installed at the throttle body, we're just about ready for the new wind tunnel. Couple things to consider. We had to make provision for the PCV valve, which we used a new tube, marries up to the existing hose, we're good to go. We had to drill our own hole for that intake air temperature sensor we talked about earlier. Don't over drill this hole. You want a good tight fit. You don't want this guy rattling around in there. This looks really good. Marry it up, slide it in. I'll come back and make connections in a minute. I'm gonna make sure this is supported properly. The next step, the cone filter. Now we're gonna start making this thing breathe a little bit and start to bring it to life. Coming up next on Tech Garage, brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts, the exhaust system.
then we're going to see a big difference. An air fuel ratio of 12 to 1 would most likely indicate which condition. A, a clogged air filter, B, a clogged fuel filter, C, clogged injectors, or D, a weak fuel pump. The correct answer is A. 12 parts of air in one part of fuel would indicate a rich condition. A clogged air filter would result in more fuel than air. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Well, we got the cold air intake all bolted on and in. We got the cold air rushing in, but just as importantly, we got to get it out. And that's the job of the exhaust system. Now, you've probably seen a muffler before, but we actually cut this one open so you can see inside and we can show you exactly what it does. It's obviously going to muffle the sound. That's one of its jobs. But there's a series of baffles and resonators. The exhaust comes in. It runs through all these little tubes and passages. And eventually, after all the vibration, the noise, the harmonics, and everything, it's going to come out this side. And then it's going to go to the tailpipe and exit. You also got some hangers here that's going to support it. These are rubber, so you don't get any vibration up in the cab. Now, our exhaust gas is going to do a lot better job, quiet the sound, but let it flow. You've probably heard the term headers before. Well, I got a set of headers right here. Headers actually allow the exhaust to flow out and flow out real smoothly, but what a lot of people don't know, a good set of headers will actually time the exhaust pulses. So when one goes through, the other one's right behind it. Well, what does that do? That's actually gonna help draw a vacuum. Well, remember volumetric efficiency? We're taking the charge and we wanna get it out of the cylinder. If we can get out of the cylinder, we can fill more. So as each one of those pulses happen, I'm drawing the air out and pushing out at the same time, getting better volumetric efficiency. Our exhaust is gonna help us do that. Now Brian's taking the old exhaust off. I just about have this factory exhaust system ready to come down, John. One more piece here. We've gotten everything loosened up. Now if you're tackling a project like this in your driveway, a lengthy, heavy system, Couple tips, small things that mean a lot. Number one, the right tools. PB blaster and a good set of channel locks. We actually hit all the threads and the nuts last night in anticipation of this work. Made a huge difference when it came time to loosen them. If it's a big heavy system, get a buddy to help you so you don't hurt yourself or the underneath of the vehicle when you set it down. Now, I've broken this into components and we're gonna take the smallest possible pieces out one at a time, but I still need a hand. So John, could you give me a hand and help me get this guy down? Yeah, let's go for the tailpipe first. Okay. All right. Coming your way. Got it. Thank you. Get the second section here. Muffler. It's a big, heavy one from Dodge. Magnaflow is going to be a lot lighter and a lot better performing. All right, ready for the new one. Now what we're putting on this car is a MagnaFlow exhaust cat back system. This is nice. It's 100% stainless steel. You got these clamps right here and what these clamps do, it's going to clamp all the parts together and you're definitely not going to have any leakage. They also supply you with all the hardware. Anything that you want to hang it, you saw the hangers earlier right here, that'll work real good. Now our tailpipe goes from here to here. With a little modifications, we're going to poke this one right out the side. It's going to be sharp. And this is the muffler. Well, you saw the muffler earlier. As far as restrictions, not much here. This is actually dyno tested to proven to make some horsepower. This is gonna be a great system. Brian, you ready for it? Well, we're just about there. Now keep in mind, on our 09 Ram, we've modified the exhaust system to come out the side, but don't worry, we're gonna be legal. Now MagnaFlow did most of the engineering for us, but with so many cab choices on today's pickup trucks, you may have to make a slight adjustment or two. We're all set. The first step is to add this bracket for MagnaFlow scent, take advantage of a factory hole, Hey, John, go ahead and bring that beastie exhaust system in. Looks like you about got it, Brian. You know, I got the clamp slipped on, almost ready to go. All we got to do is put this muffler up and then hook the tailpipe up. Take the muffler and just slide it onto the outlet pipe. I'll go ahead and get it in this hanger here. Matches right up with the factory hanger. All right. Just leave that a little loose and we'll go ahead and put the tailpipe right up to it. This would be perfect. I'm gonna leave this a little bit loose so we've got some adjustment on the tailpipe. Awesome, I got the clamps on. You give me a hand there. Great. Come right out the side under there. Come right out. Mm -hmm. Slide this 
meet this to the exhaust system. Good. Good. Yep. All right. PB blaster on that too. Sure never hurt anybody. Perfect. Okay. Now all we need to do is go through, make some fine tune and adjustments, tighten up the clamps, and we're about ready to hear this thing roar. We got clearance everywhere. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. Now when we come back, we're going to program it, twink the computer a little bit, finish up with the exhaust, and we got our email question of the week. So stick around. We got more to come. This edition of Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Dustless Blasting. It's the future of surface preparation. Extreme Polymers. Experience extreme performance. KNM. Superior airflow, superior performance. And by Advanced Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Welcome back to Tech Garage. Well, we got our cold air intake installed along with our MagnaFlow exhaust. We're getting it in and we're getting it out. And we also increase volumetric efficiency on this engine. Now, if you recall earlier, we looked at the mass airflow sensor. That's right here. That was the grams per second. Now, what we can do, the moment of truth, we can go ahead and crank this up and see if there's any difference. But keep this in mind. This truck's a drive-by wire. The RPM may not be exactly. This is not an exact science, but this will definitely show us a difference. And if we don't see a difference, I know we're going to hear one. Go ahead and crank it up. All right, go ahead. We got about 13 at idle. It's looking a lot better than before. Go ahead and nail it. Wow. That's great. Shut it off. Not only did it sound good, we're talking about 56 grams per second. Now, there's a lot of variables in that because it's revving up faster, we got the exhaust going out, but still, we definitely proved the difference. We got one more twink to make, and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna program it so we can take that air in and get it out and use it efficiently with the computer parameters. And inside the truck, Brian, why don't you handle that? Okay, the next step is to disconnect the Genesis scan tool and make room for what will ultimately be our bully dog programmer. Now, follow the directions. People can get confused, you can get intimidated, you think, wow, I'm actually changing settings within the vehicle's computer system. Yep, you are. But bully dog has done a lot of this engineering and taking care of it for you. Just follow the directions. Another tip, make sure your battery is fully charged before you tackle this install. Things like your accessories being on can drain battery power during the install process ultimately affecting what gets downloaded to your vehicle's computer system. Follow the directions. They've made it very easy. You also have to make decisions like where do you want your heads-up display? Do you want it integral in the A-pillar? Do you want to use a suction cup mount, which is what we like, because we can decide do we want it down low or up higher on the windshield so that it's not in our preferred line of sight. That, that also can be your choice. Now, easy to do from here. We've got a power and control box that we'll put up around the steering column somewhere. We'll fasten it in so it's nice and secure. Bully Dog told us, first, run our power from the fuse box in the engine bay, which we've done. They gave us a spade. It was easy to piggyback power, no problem. We also have an HDMI cable that goes from this control box up to our heads-up display. We've already run that cord. So next step, get the Bully Dog display up and running. First, we connect our power to the control box. Next, the HDMI for the display up at the Bully Dog control box. Finally, the OBD2 connector, very straightforward. Make sure you get a good connection. Then I want to come up and install the Bully Dog screen. Plenty of slack on this HDMI cable. Allows us for another good connection. And you heard a beep, we've got power. We're officially talking to the vehicle's computer system and we've got all the power we need to start installing more power. In the meantime, while I finish this up, hey John, let's take a look at the email question of the week. John Jake from Tampa emailed us this week and he's got an 06 Silverado that's just lacking power. It's got 72,000 miles on it. He replaced the air filter, he replaced the plugs and the problem persists. What advice can we give Jake? That falls right in line to what we talked about today. That perfect fuel mixture, 14.7 to 1, stoichiometric. Starts going up, lean, starts going down, rich. Got two good examples for you. Here's an air filter. Now, Brian, they look pretty similar, don't they? Sure do. They do, but what happens when you pop your top off, this is what you're looking at. This is actually the business end. So a good illustration here is, if I run a flashlight through here, you can hardly even see it, yeah. okay? 
Then what I do is I take the new one and run it through, and you can see that shining Big. bright, yeah. So that's gonna restrict the air. If I'm restricting the air, that means that I'm getting more fuel. This is gonna cause a rich condition. What do you got over there? So fuel filters, these are pretty common fuel filters you'll find on today's vehicles. Same principle, these guys get clogged. They do a tremendous amount of work. They flow a lot of fuel all the time, all day, and they get clogged and they build that up over time. You can see that it's dirty to the naked eye, especially when you compare it to the new one. Interestingly, this one's much heavier. I can feel the contamination and dirt in here. This is easy to change with the right tools. You gotta keep in mind, this fuel pump is only capable of so much volume and so much pressure. So a clogged fuel filter is absolutely gonna give you a lean condition. That is a lean condition. Now I got a good example. Remember that short-term, short-term, long-term fuel trim? Brian, you can play the oxygen sensor. Right. Brian, you're the condition, you're downstream. I'm the actual command, CCC, command corrects condition. That's how your car works. So if I'm going down the road, I have this leaking injector, stuck open injector, I'm pouring fuel down there. What's happening down in the exhaust stream? I'm going to have a rich condition. It's going to smell like fuel. It is. That's exactly what's going on. And then over here, the computer is going to take it away. Negative number. Now, on the other hand, I got a cracked vacuum line. Air's getting in there. Air's getting in there. That's not supposed to get in there. What's happening? That's going to be a lean condition. A lean condition. The computer's going to add fuel. Exactly what's going on. That plus and negative, what we talked about today. Man, it's a great day today. We put that uh, cold air cleaner on that truck. We put that exhaust on the truck. You know, we were getting more in, in, in and out. But when we programmed it, we kept that number at 14.7 to 1. That's critical. The point is we needed to match that fuel with that air. We just put more of it in there. Truly bolt-on power, folks. It's about air, fuel, and fire and the proper balance of all of them. We did that today. This stuff's easy to understand. Jake, that's probably what you need to look into to see if you've got the power issue solved. Great day today, but we look forward to seeing you next week. From our garage to your garage. Thanks for watching Tech Garage. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola College has a current enrollment of over 2,000 students. Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.